All right, so today I'm going to answer the question, what's the average settlement for a car accident when you sustain a back and neck injury? Back and neck injuries, they're often called whiplash injuries. That's when you're driving, get into a crash, and your neck goes forward and backward, and you're feeling you know, the pain in your back and your neck, maybe your lower back as well. A lot, a lot of factors help affect this. Um, and there's a lot of defenses to these kinds of claims. The problem with whiplash is a lot of the times you don't see the pain. There are ways to try and test for it, but you generally speaking, it's just someone that is complaining about pain. So the recommendations for a whiplash injury is go seek medical treatment. If you have it, if you're you know relatively within the time of the accident and you haven't seen urgent care or something like that, if you have health insurance, uh, go to you know whatever provider you can get to, like a like an urgent care or an orthopedist, or if you have you know Kaiser, go to Kaiser, things like that. You gotta go and get the documentation. Without proper documentation, it's gonna be very difficult to show that your whiplash is serious, and you might you, you might struggle just getting you know a few thousand dollars. Um, if it's purely just whiplash, all things equal. The other thing to look at is the property damage. A lot of times, um, insurance companies will look at property damage and say, "Oh, well, this property damage, you know, it's just a bumper, uh, rear, uh, you know, just a fender bender, so it really couldn't have caused the uh, the injury." I'm not a firm believer in low property damage not causing uh, injuries. I've handled and litigated many, many cases where you could barely even see the property damage but we were still able to resolve the claims for very substantial amounts of money, tens of thousands, uh, if not more. And it's definitely something worth, you know, it, 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 low property damage is not really, uh, it's, it's, I, I just don't see it as a great defense. And I cover it in other videos, what, you know, what, how to counteract that type of argument. Um, you know, just pretty much that you don't believe it. You know, if if the you know two cars come and one hits the other one, it's, it's several thousand pounds of impact. It's gonna cause it. It can cause a lot of pain. So, car act, average settlements, um, they range. You know, from thousands of dollars, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of dollars. D it depends on several factors. How are you prepping the case? Are you going to the proper medical providers? Uh, did you get the proper documentation? Um, do you have certain diagnoses? Are you going to physical therapy? Are you going to a chiropractor? Are you going to you know, pain management if you need that? Are you getting the proper radiographic studies? That's why it's important. Talk to an attorney. Uh, see you know, what types of things you can do in order to uh, help bolster your case. So bottom line is that you know, I mean, it's very cynical to say, but if you don't have an attorney working with you on a car accident case, it's much more likely that the insurance company will pay you less. And yes, that's kind of a bold statement to make, but it's the truth. Usually when attorneys step in, uh, they start trying to, you know, negotiate a little bit better and perhaps resolve the case for more. I mean, obviously it depends who the attorney is. If they're, you know, nobody and the insurance company hasn't heard of them, then maybe they're just kind of like a wild card. But if they have a history with an insurance company or the insurance company industry, because the insurance companies, they share information, um, which is why it's important to be truthful, then um, the attorney may be able to get a lot more money. So, you know, people often think, well, maybe I shouldn't hire an attorney because I'm going to be paying them uh, from the settlement. But think of it this way. Let's say... You know, you you you're gonna settle with an insurance company for like two thousand bucks, which is very very often in these uh, whiplash cases when you may be entitled to much much more, or you know you can get an attorney that is going to get you thirty thousand or fifty thousand or more uh, for this whiplash case, which you know whiplash cases they can go for that amount. Not to say that they're gonna go for that amount all the time, but uh, you know if prepped the right way, then they could go. So. It, 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 to give an attorney a third or b however much the uh, contingency fee agreement is for that, you're going to walk away with a lot more money, you know, even after uh, potentially the medical bills are spent. And so 
average settlements really depends on how it's prepped, the property damage, um, in certain situations. I mean, obviously, if it's just like you know, they're they're the cars barely even touched each other, then yeah, it might it might be a difficult case to try and prove for whiplash. But you got to be able to uh, try try and at least prove your whiplash. So all over the place, the the car the settlements. But it's definitely worth talking to an attorney to see how you can maximize your value on a whiplash case. All right. Hope this was helpful. Let me know if you guys have any questions. Thanks.